In the hustle and bustle of big city life, green spaces provide peace and fresh air. And vitally important habitat for wildlife. Hi, I'm Cara from Melbourne University and I'm currently studying the benefits of urban green spaces to people and animals alike. My fieldwork sites include the parks, gardens and golf courses of Melbourne, areas that are home to more plants than other parts of the city. And I'm working alongside other ecologists who are also researching green spaces. Some of the questions we're aiming to answer are, what species of plants and animals live in these areas? How many of each type are there? And how are they affected by the way people manage their habitats? There's no denying this is a really big job and it involves a lot of separate tasks. Like conducting vegetation surveys, which is what we're getting ready to do now. To map the vegetation in a green space, we first mark out a 20 by 30 metre plot. Then we identify every tree, shrub and ground cover species in this area and measure the height of each vegetation layer. We also record the number, width and health of the trees so we can learn more about the value of this ecosystem as habitat. Now when working out what types of animals live in a green space, it's critical to investigate the insects. To monitor the abundance of different insect species in a green space, we use various nets and traps. Sweet nets are great for flushing insects out of vegetation in the daytime, while light traps attract species that are active at night. And pan traps target wasps and bees. Since insects are eaten by lots of animals, sampling their population in a green space tells us what food is available for bigger critters. The larger animals we survey for include birds and mammals, and right now, I'll run you through the work we do with bats. More specifically, with microbats, those flying mouse-like mammals that use echolocation to get around. To survey these guys, we record their calls, which usually can't be heard with human ears. We put devices called bat detectors inside possum boxes and leave each one in a tree overnight. The next day, we take them down and transfer the data they've recorded to a computer so we can work out which microbats are in the area. You see, each microbat species has its own unique acoustic signature. So just by looking at these sound files, we can tell what types of microbats are using this area. We add our bat data to the information we collect about other species in a green space to get a good idea of how the ecosystem there is used as habitat. We can then compare these findings with those from other green spaces in the city or with data from the same patch later on, so we can see how it changes over time. Knowing about the ecosystem in green spaces like this is critical for looking after them properly and then we can make sure they stay part of our big busy cities.